Hello everyone, welcome back to Switch Up, and today we have a review for you of New Star GP. This is a low poly racing game based of course on Grand Prix Formula One, which has a career mode as well, which we'll have a look at for you and tell you if it's worth picking up. This one was developed by a small British team, New Star Games, who have a good repertoire behind them. But does this come in in pole position or does it blow its tire on the first corner? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code and now let's find out. So gameplay wise then, as Mark mentioned, this is developed by New Star Games who have some decent games behind them that generally focus on sport and some sort of management angle. They've done a lot of football games in the past and they also developed Retro Bowl, which was very highly received when it came out. It was like a modern take on the old Techno Bowl American football game. I think on the Nintendo Switch, we do have a bit of a lack of this genre. So it is nice to see that almost virtual racing style finally arriving in something that looks a bit more fleshed out. Absolutely, and it does take that virtual racing style and merge it with something a bit more akin to the more realistic Formula One games that you see on other consoles to become almost like a, a hybrid of sorts. So in terms of the gameplay options, you have a cup mode, which is very much what you'd expect from any sort of racing game where you can take on a variety of different cups, increasing in difficulty as you go along. And within this challenge mode with the cups, you can actually create custom cups of your own as well, which is nice to see. You can play this in single player or you can play it with a second player and that is just locally unfortunately there isn't an online mode or the main draw as far as i'm concerned is the career mode so this basically sees you playing through five different decades starting in the 1980s and making your way up to the 2020s and you have to race through 10 different grand prix races accumulating enough points through these to then qualify for that next decade before each of the grand prix races you have a number of different race modes that you can take on and these serve the purpose of the qualifying weekends that you get in real life you know so rather than taking part in qualifying modes you'll have things like an elimination mode or a checkpoint race or a time trial and these just warm you up and get you used to each of the new tracks and then you'll take part in the actual Grand Prix itself now as this is a career mode as well as the racing there are some other managerial aspects that you'll need to take on micromanaging your team to an extent so you'll have your team around you and you need to keep these people happy or you can actually just fire them and, and hire new staff members now each of your team bring new abilities to the party basically and what you can do is you can actually use the perks that they give you as you go through to gain abilities that you can use within the races so just to step away from that for a second you have two different types of currency within the game you have cups and you have bucks and uh, if we look at the cups first because that ties into the perks I mentioned a minute ago every time you complete a race you'll earn these cups and getting a certain amount will unlock new perks that your team will then bring to you and you can then choose to equip these in one of your free slots and they'll give you perks such as uh, the pit stops being automatic so you don't have to do it yourself getting a better boost at the starting line when you press you know for go or even more financial ones such as gaining more money from races so i can see there are multiple difficulty modes you've got normal and pro difficulty and there seems to be a dynamic difficulty system that adapts to the player how about then you're in the race you're starting off how does it play how does it control so in terms of controls it's actually quite realistic considering that it is i would say still more arcadey to an extent cars will try to block you as you try to overtake the ai is actually of a, of a good standard and they will as you improve your car and i'll talk about that in a minute you will notice the ai become more aggressive in future races as they upgrade their cars as well does it have any form of rubber banding because that's the thing that i always think of when i'm looking at racing games not that i noticed i mean you'll have times but obviously because it has pit stops cars will catch you up but then obviously they'll pit potentially on the next lap and you'll go back in front of them so it's quite realistic in that respect just to move back to the currency so i mentioned the cups you then have the bucks as well again you get these for completing races but with these you can actually upgrade your car so you can uh, you know improve handling improve the acceleration etc etc but what you can also do which is quite interesting is you can almost pay your competitors to borrow their technology so these aren't permanent upgrades you can only have these for one race but they're cheaper because of it so if you're struggling in a particular race you could uh, go down this path instead of trying to save up for the upgrades and it will just give you that boost for that one race and then obviously your car will return to its uh, its pre-race stats before you bought that particular upgrade it's interesting to see the hybrid arcade sim style it looks like they take the best parts of sim but then keep that core arcade experience in terms of the racing they very much do yeah the the racing is arcadey in terms of things like i mean you could cut corners whereas obviously in a real simulation of formula one you'd be penalized for that so it does have that arcadey aspect to it but it does still feel pretty realistic in terms of how you race on the track it's just how you choose to race i suppose will determine how arcadey it feels 
One aspect that really does accentuate that feeling of realism versus arcade is the rewind feature. Now when you play the Grand Prix themselves, you can't retry these, so if you do badly, then that's it. That's the score you'll get. But you can have three rewinds per race. Basically pressing Y will allow you to go back a certain amount of time, obviously press Y again to restart from that point. And using these well can earn you a podium finish where otherwise you may have had an absolute disaster of a race. And on that, you have obviously the race lines, which you'd expect to find in a Formula One game. Now, I, I'm pretty sure this works like this in most of these sort of games, but you have obviously the green race line means go, you know, just keep accelerating. If it turns yellow, it means take your hand off of the accelerator. And if it turns red, then you need to brake. And this actually felt very fluid. And this comes from someone that really struggles with race lines in Formula One games, you know, for the most part. I really started to enjoy this and the controls are incredibly fluid at these times. One thing that always comes up in any racing game is whether or not you can set the analog stick to actually allow for analog acceleration. How does that work here? Yeah, no, it's straight ZR to accelerate. But because of the way that you decrease your speed by basically, you know, releasing the button or braking, I never felt it was an issue. You know, it still feels very fluid despite that. So as I mentioned earlier, you can pit or will have to pit and there is some strategy in terms of this, in terms of the tires you pick or how many stops you have during a race. And this applies to damage as well. If your car is damaged, then you may need to spend even longer, obviously repairing that damage and the amount of fuel that you carry. Obviously that makes you slower so you can you know, decide how much you want to, uh, to take with you depending on how often you're planning on stopping. Gameplay is incredibly rewarding. You know, there are a few things that come up every so often. You'll be asked the same questions by journalists, but for the whole, the career mode is very, very enjoyable and, and pretty extensive as well. Gameplay gets 18 out of 20. Controls were actually one of the most enjoyable parts of this game for me. I really did feel that they assisted you in what you needed to do, and they get 19 out of 20. So in terms of the visuals, performance as well, and the audio, well, as you can see by now, it goes for a low poly look. Mark referenced virtual racing right back at the start, and it very much uh, reminds you of that style. As far as performance goes, well, on other platforms, it's 60 locked out. On Switch, it tends to fluctuate. When you've got lots of racers on screen, you're looking at about 45 to 55 FPS. It can go all the way up to 60, particularly if you're playing solo, doing things like time trials. Yeah, this is most noticeable when you are turning around corners that are quite populated, or if you have a crash, you'll notice that frame rate drop, but it doesn't really affect the gameplay unless you're absolute staunch, you must have 60. Another thing to note is there are a number of camera angles that you can cycle through as you play. These range from from being in the cockpit to being just behind the car, you can even play from a top-down view, which is quite nice. In terms of the uh, the overall aesthetic though, obviously we've mentioned it's low poly and it does look lovely. I, I always enjoy that style in racing games and you will see a nice variety across each of the tracks. Obviously they're all set in different countries and you have those uh, kind of stereotypical aspects to it that, that you'll notice as you drive around. For example, one of the tracks takes place in Northampton in England and you'll see the red arrows fly past as you're racing. Just nice little touches like that. Yeah, it does feel polished this one, I think. It's obviously has the arcade style, but there are a lot of little details in here, even down to UI designs looking more polished than we very often get. And you can customize your car. There are a number of uh, different ways that you can customize it, including liveries and colors, as well as your driver. In terms of the audio, it goes for a synth soundtrack, which is very uh, fitting for the, the action on screen. Some of the tracks were very, very good, actually, really did stick in your head. A few of the others were not quite as memorable, but across the board, it was of a good quality. It doesn't have any voice acting. You'll have your, your team communicate with you at times as you race, but this is done via sort of like a garbled language. But again, it fits the game very well. Visuals look lovely and I do enjoy that style. It's a shame they couldn't hit 60 consistently, but overall it gets 17 out of 20. Audio, again, definitely fits the on-screen action. Some of it isn't quite as memorable as I would have liked, and it also gets 17 out of 20. New Star GP costs £24.99 or your regional equivalent. And for this, you are getting the career mode, which launches across five decades, as mentioned, each with 10 race weekends to complete and a few other race modes to try as you go. And there is that championship mode as well, which can be played locally with two players. I feel this is a good price for what you get, actually. You know, the career mode is a lot more extensive than I was expecting it to be. The only thing I would say is it's a shame it's not up to four players mm. and it's a shame it's not online. I think that would have boosted the value that little bit more. And of course, the frame rate, if it could have stayed at 60, that would have been fantastic. But on the whole, I do feel that this is a good value if you like these sort of games. And as you mentioned, there is a dearth of them on the Switch. On balance, I would say value gets 16 out of 20. 
To conclude then, New Star GP definitely does what it sets out to do. It merges that arcade style of racing with a more career, realistic archetype and taking, as you said earlier, the best of each of those and putting them together. It's a shame that it doesn't have four player and online in terms of its multiplayer. And it's a shame that the frame rate does fluctuate a bit more than you would like. But for the money you're spending and bearing in mind the lack of competition on the Switch, I would say this is definitely a game worth picking up. I've had a huge amount of fun with this one. New Star GP gets a switch up score of 87%. Nice one. Let us know what you think down in the comments. A big thanks to the publisher for the review copy and to all of you for watching. For sure. Don't forget if you are looking for eShop credit to pick this game up, you can use our website switchup.gg. You get yourself 5% back in cash back if you do. Links down below as well as a few other links for physical games if you're looking for such things. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.